Okay, so welcome back to this fourth video on an example of how to use the law of total expectation. So, um, what we have been, uh, what, we, what we are trying to do is we're trying basically to replace this, which we don't know, with this, which we do know. So, I know what this is going to be because I know it's uniformly distributed on 0 to x. Now, what I'm trying to do is get it in terms of uh, this joint probability density function over here so that I can then rearrange and get what this is in terms of this. Okay, so now let's think about what this means. So, if I take out this uh, event that I've conditioned on and put it down here, so this is the event that big X is equal to little x down here. So I'll bring this up a bit. Right, so I've removed that event out here. And basically, if I want to know what the probability density function that uh, the um, random variable y is when we've conditioned on big X is equal to little x, then basically what I need to do is just obey the, um, obey the, law, the way in which you find probabilities for, um, for conditional probability probability, how, how you find conditional probabilities. Basically, the pro it's complicated by the fact that we're working with probability density functions here. So, uh, the probability density function means if I take a little value y here, and then I take the interval from y to y plus delta y, so this interval has length delta y, what is the probability of being in that interval? Okay, now that's going to be the probability of being in that interval in this larger probability space here, but then we want the conditional probability, so we're going to divide by the probability of that entire pink event to bump it back up. So what we want, basically, is the probability of being in that interval where you view the pink probability space as being your entire probability space. What we can do is find the probability of being in that interval in the entire probability space and then divide it by the probability of um, being, in, um, being in that pink probability space to then bump it up to what the conditional probability should be. Okay, so what's the probability of being in that little interval within this orange triangle? Well, to do that, what we have to do is, m because you can't find the probability of being on a line in this triangle, uh, you have to find the probability of being in a little box in this larger probability space. So what we'll have to do is basically turn this into a little box. So I'll draw it as a little box here, and we'll find the probability that you're within that little box, and we'll just let this uh, this x interval here, the other side of the box, be very, very small, basically. Right, so if we want the probability that you're within that box, well, we know how to do that using this joint probability density function. So it's going to be the joint probability density function evaluated at the point at which you've put the box, which is the point x, y, because we know your x value is equal to little x, and we also know your y value is equal to little y. And then it's times delta y, which is this height of the box, and then times this delta x, which we're going to let be very small, which is this side length for the box that we've had to create in order to turn it into uh, something that we can actually find within this two-dimensional um, structure. Right, and now what we need to do is divide that by the probability of being in the entire pink space. Right, so to do that, what we do is we uh, consider making the entire pink space have the same width, basically, as that little box that we had to make a width. Because again, we can't find the probability of being on a pink line. We have to give it a width, basically. So we give it this same width as our little box. And what we're going to do is um, divide through by the probability of that um, little box. And basically, that's going to be the marginal PDF uh, of uh, big X evaluated at little x times delta x. Because remember what this is, what we're basically asking is what's the probability of big x equaling little x, or at least big x being within this interval, little x to little x plus delta x, and that's going to be the marginal PDF of big x evaluated times delta x times the length of that interval, basically. Now what we can do is we can cancel the delta y's and the delta x's, and that gives us the usual formula for getting, um, getting uh, conditional probability density functions from the non-conditional probability density functions. So basically, if we want uh, the um, conditional probability density function of big Y, given that big x is equal to little x, 
so I'll bring this up here, um, evaluated at little y, then that's going to be the joint PDF function of x and y evaluated at little x, little y, divided by the marginal PDF of big X evaluated at little x. Right, okay, now what we use is the fact that we know this because it's uniformly distributed on 0 to x. So what should its probability density function be? Well, let's discuss that over the page. Well, not over the page because there's something on the back, but on our next page. Okay, right, so if you want to know what the um, marginal PDF of the uniform distribution on 0 to x is, then uh, think of it as basically a graph. Here's our graph. Let's say this is 0 to x, and we're going to plot the PDF of y, given that big X is equal to little x, as a function of little y. So this is our little y down here. Right, okay, well, what we know is that it has to be the same everywhere, and it has to integrate to 1 to be a PDF. So basically, it has to be some constant. And what is that constant? Well, we don't know, but we can use the fact that it has to integrate to 1 in order to work out what that constant needs to be. OK, right. So that constant times x, basically, the area of this box has to equal 1, because all PDFs have to integrate to 1. The integral underneath this PDF is just going to be the height of the PDF times the length uh, on which the constant is maintained, basically, because it's such a simple function. So that tells us that this constant needs to be 1 over x. Right, so that tells us what the PDF is now, because the PDF is just a constant, and that constant has to be 1 over x. So now we can substitute that in here, and then what will we get from that? We will get that 1 over x is equal to the joint probability density function of x, y, given that x, um, given that, um, uh, well, given uh, the joint probability density function of x and y, at evaluated at little x and little y, divided by the probability density function of big X given lit uh, at little x, so the marginal PDF. Right, but actually, we don't even know, need to know what this, um, what this, um, what this um, conditional PDF is for us to be able to um, solve this problem. So I will show you how to do so. Uh, well, for us to get somewhere at least. Um, so um, what we're trying to do is do this integral here. Now, we don't know what this is, but we want to get it in terms of this. Now, we could just substitute in uh, the... Um, well, yes, what we can do is we can rearrange this now and substitute in for the joint PDF, what it is in terms of this conditional PDF, which is something we know, times this marginal PDF of x, which is also something we know. We know that that's just uniformly distributed on 0 to 1, because it's the PDF of this random variable back here. So, now let's um, do that. So, right. So, if we uh, want this expected value of y, uh, then it's going to be equal to... So now, substitute in, uh, in the place of the joint PDF, what we now want it, um, what we've now found that it is. So it's still the integral from 0 to 1 of, um, of the integral from 0 to x of the, now we substitute in for the joint PDF, we substitute in uh, this uh, conditional PDF here, uh, evaluated at little y times the marginal PDF of x evaluated at little x, times this value of y, dy, and then obviously dx outside. Right, now let's look at that in more detail. Okay, so um, the first thing to note is that this marginal PDF of x it, is basically, it's not involved in this integral at all. It does not depend on what your value of y is. So we will take that out of this inner integral. So this integral becomes the integral from 0 to 1, and now we've got the marginal PDF of x evaluated at little x, times the inner integral, which is now the integral from uh, 0 to x of uh, this conditional PDF of y, given that we are conditioning on the event that big X is equal to little x, i.e. your first break is some specific value, and then times that by uh, little y dy, basically. Right, uh, d and then obviously dx is outside. Now, 
um, we are we are going to work this out. We are going to substitute in what the um, what the um, conditional PDF is eventually. But let's just think about what this actually is here, because I want to show you how this gives us the law of total expectation. Basically, think about what this is. What this is saying. It is saying if I draw the picture of the triangle again. So let's have our triangle here. So this is our subset of R2 on which we are working. So here's our triangle. Uh, this goes from 0 to 1, and this also goes from uh, 0 up to 1 up there. Right, uh, so what, what are we actually doing when we calculate this integral? We are saying we have conditioned on the value of x being equal to some constant. So we basically said we are only interested in this probability space. This now gives us the probability density function that if you are working within this pink probability space, so I'll take this pink probability space out. Here it is. Basically, this now gives us the probability density function that the y random variable will be a certain value. So y is going to ascribe every point in this um, pink probability space its y value. So all it will do, basically, is it will take it and find its y value and it will ascribe it that same value, okay? What this is, is it's telling you what the probability density function for this random variable when you just view it as acting on this pink probability space is, basically, in terms of your position, in terms of y. So give me a little y value. This is your probability density function. What we are now doing is we are integrating for, across this entire probability space from 0 up to x, because that's the top of this probability space. The top up here is x. We are integrating over the entire probability space the PDF times the value of y. That is going to find us the expected value of this random variable just by definition. But of course, it's the expected value of the random variable conditional on this probability on this pink probability space, which is the pink probability space that big X is equal to little x. Okay, so what we could do is we could rewrite this entire integral here as the integral, and let me move this up, from uh, 0 to 1 of uh, the expected value of y conditional on big X equaling little x times the probability density function of big X evaluated at little x dx. Okay, and this is the law of total expectation. Okay, so we've derived the law of total expectation in some sense, of total expectation. Right, okay, uh, so it tells us that if we want to find the expected value of the entire random variable y, then what we can do effectively is we can condition on all of the values of x ranging from 0 to 1. We can find the value, expected value of y conditional on that value of x, and then we can integrate all of those conditional expected values up over every possible value that x can take on from 0 to 1, and then all we need to do is just times it by the probability that you get that little value of x, which is basically this probability density function that you'll get this value of x times dx which is just a tiny infinitesimal length. So remember, that just turns the probability density into an actual probability. OK, so that's the law of total expectation. Right, and this is why it's very convenient to think of this as a function, to write this as the expected value of y given x, to think of it, basically, as a function um, because, um, a as a random variable, rather, because what we could view this as being is we could view this as being the expected value of the expected value of y given x. Now, why does that work? Because if this was just a random variable, which was some function of x, so which they often are, as we've done lots of examples of calculating these things now, if we thought of it as a random variable, which was another random variable, which was a function of this random variable x, then if we were taking the expected value of some function of the random variable x, how would we do it? Well, we'd apply Lotus, basically. We'd say that it was the integral over all values of x, which in this case is 0 to 1, of uh, this function, where you now replace uh, 
the um, it being as a function of big X as being a function of little x, which is effectively what you're doing when you put that uh, big X is equal to little x, and then times the probability density function that you're at that little value of x dx. So that's why it's very nice to think of this. Um, this um, as being a random variable because then you can think of the expected value of y as being the expected value of the expected value of y given x and that law there this this uh, expression is also is known as the um, law of iterated expectations law of iterated expectations it's got another name uh, which is Adam's law iterated expectations and the reason it's called that is that there is another law later uh, with regards to conditional vari uh, variance, which is called Eve's Law. So that's why it's called Adam's Law, because Adam's Law and Eve's Law interact very nicely. Law of Iterated Expectation, um, so, um, or Adam's Law. Adam's Law. Right. Okay, so now let's use the Law of Total Expectation to actually calculate our problem. Okay, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue this in the next video.